Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to join us in, oh, sorry, I forgot the gong. Okay. I invite you to join us in our opening song. Welcome to Unity of Madison. Thank you for choosing to spend this time with us, whether in line or online or in person. Sorry. <laughs> we feel your presence. After the service, for those of us present, we invite you to join us in the Namaste Cafe in the lower level for refreshments. I am Pat Arnold, and I am your celebration assistant today. So today our um, prayer chaplain is uh, Jamie Gaylor, and after the service, the prayer chaplain will be available to pray with you in the prayer chaplain corner. Written prayer requests may also be placed in the prayer box, which is right outside the prayer chaplain corner. Uh, written prayer requests are held in prayer for 30 days here um, and then are sent to silent unity to be held in prayer for another 30 days. And so, um, and we'll have um, the opening prayer a little later in the um, service today. So, it's time for weekend updates. And our 
our uh, speaker schedule for the next couple of weeks. On uh, next week, on November 5th, Barry Roberts will be in person. Um, on Sunday, November 12th, Reverend Tom Wendt will be here in person. And on November 19th, Sunday, Reverend Richard Bunch will be here on video. So it's time to order poinsettias. So we're ordering poinsettias for the the Christmas season for here. So you could also um, order plants to help decorate the church or for your own. There are two plants um, in each pot are $26. The deadline to order is November 8th. So contact D. Steele in the church office. And there's probably some info out in the foyer also. Uh, a new membership class will be held on Sunday, November 12th at 1145 after the service um, in the here in the sanctuary. Are you ready to confirm your commitment to unity principles? Come and learn more about unity of Madison. The class is open to anyone who wants a refresher or just wants some more information. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, hood, hood, hoodost is uh, coming to unity. This electric folk world rock musical duo is touring the world, working for social and environmental justice through music, advocacy, and art. Buy your tickets online now for this exciting evening. It is December 2nd um, here, in, and the tickets are $25. All right. And the garden team is um, helping to put the, the garden beds to, to garden beds to bed for the winter. So, um, and it, we're doing this Saturday, November 4th, which is this coming Saturday, 9.30 to 11.30, and bring food to share if you wish, and coffee and fellowship afterwards. And speaking of flowers, uh, the altar flower team members um, are wanting to in increase their members. We're looking for a few more people to help with flower decorations on the altar. Contact Ellen McGee or the church office if you are interested. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still. Oh, okay. Mine says Ellen McGee. So <laughs> find either one of those, and I'm sure you'll find out. <laughs> okay. Sorry. And there are many more events um, on the website, so please check that out. And so now um, I'll invite Joanne up for a board report. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joanne. I'm Joanne Rizika, um, and I'm the board president. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, as you heard, Reverend Richard is going to be in person uh, December 1st and, uh, no, December 3rd and the 10th, I believe, are the dates. The first two Sundays in December. So we're excited to welcome him back, and uh, he wants to be sure to come and celebrate with us now that we have a new minister coming in January. So it'll be a wonderful time to have him back with us. Um, the parking lot, as you know, has been completed. Um, <laughs> that was completed October 9th and October 15th. We were able to park on it for the first time after the lines were drawn and cement had cured. Um, and I just again want to reiterate that the handicap parking has changed. It's now two on each side of the door. So um, if you're used to the old pattern, Please look for the signs that indicate where the handicap parking is. 
um, water coolers. We had uh, discovered that our water fountains were leaking water onto the floor and of course if you've tried using them in the past the the flow would be shoot out and then it would trickle out and it was you couldn't catch it um, so they were uh, original from when we purchased this building uh, more than 30 years ago so they've been replaced um, and we had asked what bottle fillers have been added because we know that more people are drinking carrying their own water with them and reducing plastic by using your own bottle. Um, however, they, the filters that were supposed to be installed with the water coolers um, wasn't installed, so they'll be, the plumbers will be coming back to uh, fix that, and so it'll be filtered city water at that point. And, and those are mostly to improve the taste. Um, um, and then, uh, we often have events here at Unity where we're carrying chairs and carrying tables around, and if you are a person who can, is willing to help with that, uh, please let me know, because we could use your, your skills. <laughs> also, um, again, I'll just mention that we would like to have some other events, like uh, we get contacted by the, um, I think it's Forward Madison, or. The, the soccer team, you know, to see if we want to have an event of our congregation to go to, like next year, um, or the local baseball team. And those would be fun events for us to have, but we would just need a point person, and I'd be happy to work with you on that. Um, you wouldn't be alone, but, um, or a, to go to a play. In the past, I remember we've gone to a play. So um, those kind of fun events, it'd be nice to have some assistance with. And now I'll invite Nancy up to share some financial details of how we're doing. She left me the fun part. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to really acknowledge everyone who's contributed to our capital campaign. We started the campaign last November um, with a goal of raising $100,000. Um, with costs coming in higher than estimated by the time we're all, all is said and done, it'll be closer to 135, 140 for everything. But what's really exciting is how well we've done with that. Um, in the month of September alone, we had $6,132 come in for the capital campaign. Since the campaign began last November, um, people in this congregation have donated $57,560 just for the capital campaign which is just incredible. <laughs> and um, we, we also, you know, I, I think, you know, that we, we believe in our prosperity principles that Unity teaches, and we know we, we just can ask for what we need, and we don't have to try to figure out what the source is. And we also had a former member from way back when we were in the little house in, on Winnequa Avenue, um, unexpectedly leave us an extremely generous $40,000 bequest that came in this year. <laughs> and, you know, totally unexpected. Um, and, uh, and so with that bequest and the 57560 that the congregation has raised, we were able to replace our skylights, put in an incredible parking lot, upgrade our AV um, system, and not have to borrow a penny from the bank to do all that. <laughs> so, really nice. Um, and, you know, we had said it originally last November this was a three year plan, and we've raised all this in less than a year. Um, we aren't done, <laughs> so don't like stop those donations coming. We still have the front walkway, which when the parking lot was um, closed down, you got to experience why we want to also replace the front walkway, I'm sure. Um, and make that more accessible and have an access down to Tompkins. But, so we still have that to do um, next spring or summer. Um, we still have some more AV upgrades with lighting left to do. Um, so we have more to come. In addition, as Joanne mentioned, um, the water fountains weren't expected. It was another test of our prosperity consciousness. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> look what else is going after, you know, this is an older building. Uh, that's about a $5,700 repair. 
replacement. And um, we are using the Building for Our Future Fund for that as well, because it is a capital improvement, even though it wasn't part of the original campaign. Um, in addition, you all probably remember, if you were here a few weeks ago, when it was 62 degrees in here, we thought at first it was just the thermostat had a scheduling issue. We did have a technician come in when we couldn't get it to get warmer, and um, he was able to temporarily fix it, is coming back in November to more permanently fix it, and that's another close to $1,000 repair. <laughs> um, so we're just very grateful for everybody's gifts that keep on coming in. Um, you know, this is just truly remarkable, especially with, we've had the support of Reverend Richard, which has been incredible, and he got us going on this. but. Um, what a way to welcome our new minister in January, and um, and then we can put more of those funds towards you know our general fund, which we still need the donations to that for our everything utilities and all, and our payroll will be increasing. But just this is mostly a thank you to everybody who's contributed. So thanks and celebrate. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to welcome anyone joining us for the first time this morning. Unity of Madison is an inclusive spiritual community that's, that welcomes people of all faiths and backgrounds. We acknowledge the wisdom of all spiritual traditions and respect each individual's right to choose a spiritual path. Our goal is to empower and encourage each other in our spiritual journey. Informational packets are available at the back table if you'd like to know more about Unity of Madison. If you are online, you can request a welcome packet through our website, unityofmadison.org, or send an email to office at unityofmadison.org. Today, we have a very, a very special service in honor of the Day of the Dead, the Samhain ancestors, and the unity power of life. Our service is planned and led by our uni unity youth and their parents, as well as Reverend Richard Bunch and the, our youth ed coordinator, Jessica Rippenberg. So I'd like to make some introductions. Our um, music, musician for the service is Pete Calguero, of course. <laughs> and our special music is um, Sarah, Maya, Sylvia Lopez and her children, Soren, and Aria. Our speakers today are Reverend Richard Bunch, Sylvia Lopez, Tina Elliott, Marie Puckett, and Jessica Rippenberg. Our opening prayer today will be by Mary Claire Glassenhart, and our meditation guide is by Soren. So now please join me in the Ancestors song. I have never seen before. <laughs> just, just so you know, I don't even know why I said that I was going to sing. <laughs> it came from your heart. So it, yeah. I guess it, it did.
this morning. Aha. <laughs> if anyone brought prayer cards or tokens to acknowledge sisters, you're welcome to bring them up front if you haven't already done so. Let us start by acknowledging all of our ancestors. Thank you to those who brought something today. Our ancestors, literally meaning those who came before. We are each descended from an unending line of ancestors back to the beginning of time. Let us acknowledge those who came before in our lineage, who enabled us to be, enabled us to be here today. Thank you. Our ancestors are not limited by blood. Our ancestors are all of the beings who have left the realm of the living. They are beings with whom we have spiritual ties, energetic cords connecting us to each other. Let us honor our teachers, close friends, that aunt or uncle, adopted family, neighbor, or musical artist that touched your soul. Let us honor all beings, furry, scaled, lichen-encrusted, or branching around our home. To those who guided us, encouraged us, made us think, spoke up for us, or more importantly, taught us to speak up for ourselves. To those that protected us while we slept, provided unconditional love, and listened when we needed to speak. Our ancestors are many and diverse, as the leaves on the trees that fall but come again. So in the tradition of my family, I ask you to center yourself. Let's take three breaths. One with the ground beneath me. One with the sky above me. and one with the sea around us. May we open our hearts and minds as we honor our ancestors in all their forms. With this honoring, we strengthen our bond to those in the spirit realm. These beings closest to us are a gateway to the infinite knowing from which we are all temporarily veiled. So let us focus now in this period of transition from summer to winter, when this veil between the living and the dead is thinnest. Let us reconnect with this part of ourselves. Well, good morning. We'd love to hear what you guys have to share. 
And I just want to say thank you to everyone for giving us the space, the families and the kids and I, to co-create this. It's been a lot of fun to just talk about how we um, see this time of year, what's important to us, what our family rituals are, what we are instilling in our children. So I just thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone for giving us the space to share because I think it's it's really beautiful to support the, the kids and the families to, um, you know, to share from their hearts, to share their perspectives. So, yeah, all right. So I've got some little jobs for the kids throughout the service. If you guys at any point, I think everyone, up and grab a twirler and do some dancing or movement at any point, please do. You help us to build the energy of the space when you do that. And then I'll let you know when the other little jobs come around, okay? All right, so what else did I want to mention? We've got some dissolving paper and pens, and those are in the baskets. So parents, if you want to grab those baskets... And then the, I was hoping the kids, if you guys want, you can go around and give a basket to each row and just have them pass the baskets down. So everyone gets a piece of paper and a pen. And then if everyone could look under your seat, and if you have a tissue box, that would be a great hard surface to write on. You'll use the underside. If you don't have a tissue box to write on, because the, the paper's pretty thin, and you need a hard surface. We do have some books around here, and I think my helper in the back was gonna just check and see. So if you wanna look under your seat and notice whether or not you have a tissue box nearby to use as your hard surface, or maybe you've got a bag or a book in your, with you. But if you don't have something, please raise your hand. Raise your hand high if you need a hard surface to write on, and then my helper, Dakota, in the back there will help us to get you something to write on. And Tina and Sylvia are going to be sharing soon, too, and they'll let you know what's going to actually happen with those things. Does anyone have anything they want to add to the altar in terms of, well, anything that you might have brought? photos or uh, items to represent loved ones that have passed on. If you brought photos and you already set them up here and you would like, this yellow um, fabric has a magnetic um, piece behind it and I've got magnets if you'd like to have them on that magnet piece. So I, feel free to come on up if you want to take your photo from the table and put it down if it's flat so you can see it during the ceremony. Yeah? Mm -hmm. there go. So as everyone is receiving their papers and pens, I will invite Tina to come on up and to share whenever she's ready. No rush, Tina. I know you're helping with that. So, And if anyone still is waiting for the papers and pens, raise your hand high and we'll send one of the kiddos to you to help you out. Hi, I'm Tina. I'm Rosalie and Atlas's mama. And um, as you all know, the service today is dedicated to the ancestors and the ones who have come before us. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the tradition of that. So we, 
We as a people have been celebrating the spirit world at this time of year, specifically October 31st and November 1st, in all cultures across the world since ancient times. And the Celtic tradition is called Samhain, which is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. So Samhain is a time when the veil between the spirit world, the spirit realm, and the physical realm is the thinnest, perhaps so thin that we can feel and communicate with the spirits of loved ones who have passed. Thus, we invite them and honor them when they are so close to us. So why at this specific time do we honor the spirits of the dead? The energy of the earth, its rhythms and cycles, are intertwined with our own selves, bodies, minds, and spirits, whether we are conscious of it or not. At the end of the harvest, after a summer full of life, autumn is the earth's way of showing us the importance of dying and death. Just one necessary passage on the cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. We are playing this cycle out constantly every moment of every day. Breathing in, breathing out. Waking, living our lives, sleeping again. Taking in healing, shedding old patterns or traumas. The cycles guide us and it is earth animated within us. So during Samhain, we honor death as a passage on the cycle. We call in our loved ones who have died and feel that they are closer. And we might feel the bittersweetness of this, the connection and grief that they are no longer physically here with us. So we also honor ourselves in the complexity of emotions at this time. That we go through, you know, all of the cycles, the joy and the grief, and allow these experiences fully and honor ourselves. And we're in that we're allowing the natural order of the earth to unfold. My name is Soren. I am nine years old now. <laughs> Festival of the Dead or Feast of the Ancestors is held by many cultures throughout the world in honor uh, or recognition recognition of deceased ancient Romans, ancient Persians, Mexico, among other countries, celebrate up to three days, generally, gen generally occurring after the harvest in August, September, October, or November. In Mexico, Dia de los Muertos is from October 31st to November 2nd but some towns celebrate it for six or more days nowadays. Our ancestors celebrate death rather than mor mourning it. Uh, they thought, so the natives who lived in the countries, uh, uh, they thought that, that crying over the people or the ancestors uh, was disrespectful, so they decided to celebrate with it instead. How? Like I'll share too. Uh, so in Mexico, we um, have the ofrendas. Um, usually, we offer the favorite foods of the 
people that pass or loved ones uh, in the ofrenda. And we share pictures and sweet scalps to remind us that death um, doesn't have to be sad. It doesn't have to be uh, negative. It's actually part of life and it's something beautiful. And, and um, so they, in Mexico, we make uh, sweet skulls to put in the altar too. And uh, we put things like fire, water, and dirt, and uh, food. And all of those have different uh, meanings, like light, help the death in their path, and reminds that we have light, and we go and come back. And the water is for part of what we need to come uh, to earth. And um, the candles represents faith. And we usually put salt, too. And salt uh, represents or it helps the death um, purify the souls for them to come. And uh, for us, it's a time to remember the loving moments that we share with our people. And even if it was not loving, like the peace that we can have, and the, it is a time for us to communicate. If we wanna tell them something, we invite them to come and, and Sometimes we put notes, um, letters in the altar for them to, within the they come and they read those. And I think that we don't have to do it in a specific time. I think that when you want, you can give that message to them. Um, in this time of the year, we do, um, for the celebration, Day of the Death, we do a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, and a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry, wants to share one more thing. And remember, death is just a part of life. So in just a moment, Sarah and Maya are going to share a song with us. But I wanted to let you know, so you've got the paper and a pen, and you've hopefully got something hard to write on. Um, as Soren is guiding our meditation, that's a time to just get real still and centered and tap into your hearts, tap into spirit. And then afterwards, uh, Pete will play a song, and that's a really good time to write a message to um, anyone, a loved one that has passed on, a message of whatever you want, whatever's on your heart. It's dissolving paper, and at the end of the ceremony, I'm going to ask the kids to collect all the papers and to bring them up and to stir them into these um, bowls of water so the water will dissolve the messages. And the idea is that the water is transmuting all of those messages, if it's messages of love and gratitude, if it's messages of um, you know, sorrow or, or, or pain or, or things that you didn't get to say. The water is transmuting that into gold and releasing that to spirit. So. This is a good time. I know, Pete, you had a chance, too, to share, right, during the ceremony. Do you want to share that first, or somehow, somehow we missed that? It might have been my fault. There will be a chant that we all sing after Soren's meditation while we're writing, at, you know, and as we're finishing up. So I'll let Pete go ahead and share that now. Okay. I'll just sing it through and then you can sing it back. It's pretty easy. We remember those before us ancestors, ancestors, and we honor what they taught us, ancestors, ancestors. Thank you.
Okay, thank you to Tina for telling us about this beautiful song called Breaths by Crow Women. And it's just reminding us that our ancestors are still with us. Ooh, testing. Oh, <coughs> listen more often, listen more often to things than to beings. Listen more often to things than to beings. Listen more often to things than to beings, to the ancestor's word when the fire's voice is heard, to the ancestor's word in the voice of the waters. Oh, oh, oh. those who have died have never, never left the dead. Soren's going to lead us in a meditation, and then when you're complete, if you want to just kind of give Pete a look from the bus, then he's going to start the chant and the music, and that's a good time to begin writing on your papers, and then I'll let the kids know when it's time to collect those, okay? Let's start by relaxing our body.
Close your eyes, they're softening our gaze. Take a deep breath and hold it for a minute. Then exhale completely. Now allow your body to relax while your consciousness re remains aware. Let's be present and calm in this moment. Imagine yourself walking into a sacred, beautiful place that is only meant for you. Begin to envision with all of your senses that turn on what this place looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells and tastes like. You may open up your sixth sense, knowing sense. Open up your seventh sense of your sacred imagination. As you walk in the center of your sacred place, secret place, you can see a figure or figures coming towards you. Know that you are safe in this place and only love energy is present at this moment. You, you can see your loved ones coming to talk to you. Take the next few minutes to tell them anything you need to say to them and to hear any messages they may have for you. Thank your loved ones who come to visit you. That, that, that know you can connect anytime you wish.
I'm just going to give us another minute or two to write. And for the kiddos that want to help collect the papers, kids that want to help us, you can come and get a basket. But let's just continue to let everyone write a little bit, okay? I'll let you know when it's time, but come up front if you want to help collect the papers, okay? Kids are amazing, aren't they? I'm just so impressed at how how good they are at just being making themselves part of the service, but also honoring what they need and helping us to make it extra special. Thank you guys. Thank you, kids. Now comes a really fun part. So for those of you that want to take those pieces of paper, kiddos. We're going to put them in the bowls of water. So everyone that wants to, all the kids that want to put the paper in the water, please come and take some papers and put them. There's three bowls of water up here. And I'm going to give you spoons to dissolve the paper into the water. And then after service, for those that want to go outside and offer it to the earth, we'll do that together, okay? I'll give you guys some spoons.
So I'm giving all the kids an opportunity to fill their hearts full of love and blessings and ring the bell as we wrap up our ceremony here. If you want to ring the bell and you haven't had a chance, now is the time. And kids, hey kids, kids, do you hear me? They're in the zone. I just want to give the kids an opportunity, come on up, Agnya, to share about the art that they made during our, our ceremony here, during our service, and to share anything that came up for them during the meditation or the song or the writing. So let's just see what you guys have, have on your hearts. I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, so I made... I made the picture because it was mostly my imagination, but we live in an apartment, and I've always wanted a house with a backyard, a dog, and I decided to draw this. As everyone knows, did everyone get a smiley face? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made something with two sides. This is my costume. It's an alien, and a, the alien's holding the kid. Any other kids want to share their picture or say something? You can just show your picture. You don't have to speak if you don't want to. Atlas, do you want to show? Yeah, you want to stand up, honey, so everyone can see? I know, there's too many fun things happening right now. Okay, face, face the congregation. Look this way so everyone can see your beautiful picture. Yeah. Oh, got someone else. Agnia, do you want to show your picture? All right. Any other kids want to share something before we move forward? No? All right. I think it's time for the offertory. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Soren, come on up. <laughs> Thank you, Soren. Hey. Thank you. That, that was my creation. Maybe we can make those in class together sometime. Yeah? All right. Thank you. And actually, that was Kay Frazier inspired that. So, Kay, 
Thank you. She inspired me to make that. And now it sounds like we'll do it with the kids in class sometime. So thank you, Kay. Hi. So I think now we're going to hear a little from Reverend Richard. Well, good morning. I can see that we are ready to celebrate Halloween. And what I want to talk about this morning is the history of Halloween. And I want to introduce to you a couple of my friends who've been around for a while to celebrate Halloween with me. The first one is right here on your screen, and I am Santa. And I really enjoy Halloween because I get to play with the children. I get to trick and trunk all over the place. I get candy and cakes and all kinds of good things. And I, first of all, don't want to be scary to my friends, the children of Lincoln Madison. I want to say that I love you and I enjoy being with you and I look forward to Halloween this year. And so, let's learn more about the history of Halloween. But before that, I want you to meet another friend of mine. And uh, let's just find out how I do this little costume change. And um, as I do this change, this takes a second, I want to be introducing you to a fellow who again has been around for a while and he has a unique experience every, every Halloween. And so as we take a look here, let's introduce you again to my friend, Twiny. Now, Twiny loves to play the guitar, and he loves to sing. But you see, Twiny mm -hmm. cannot get his guitar in tune. And Twiny can't sing on key, except on October the 31st. Isn't that interesting? So I'm looking forward to October the 31st, Halloween, because I'll be able to sing, I'll be able to dance, I'll be able to have my guitar in tune, and I'm just going to have a good time with all my friends. And I just want you to know that, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you on Halloween night. Yes, and I will not be scary. I'll be sounding real good. God bless you guys, and children especially. And so now as we come out of this moment and come back to where I am and see if I can get this little thing done here. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. Now, not much to mess with, but I got it straight. Uh, and again, good morning. You know, the history of Halloween is fascinating when you really go back and, and look at it from some of the pagan traditions that came out of Ireland. The Celtic people had an annual celebration, which was held for two or three reasons. One is that it was the end of harvest. They just harvest all the crops. And so therefore they were ready to celebrate. Number two, they understood that they were walk, walking into uh, the winter months where there was darkness. And what they wanted to do is celebrate the opportunity to rest and for the crops to begin to rest and, and begin to spring in the spring. And then they also had an interesting tradition that on the night of October the 31st, that there would be a veil, there is a veil, between the outer world, the spirit world, and our world. And they believed that this veil came down on that particular evening and that relatives uh, who had passed away recently maybe would be visiting, that others would come forth, and that the spirits would mingle among the people in our and so 
what they did is they prepared a great feast and they had it ready to to uh to celebrate this moment of reunion at the same time there was a certain amount of fear that maybe some of the spirits coming forth might not be as friendly and may want to kidnap them and so what they started doing was wearing costumes on that day so that the people uh, and the spirits would not take them away and go against their will. And that particular holiday, celebration, pageant, took place for many years and continues even today. Later, there were bonfires that were added to the celebration, bonfires to protect people from the spirits. And one of the things that Druid priests, Druid, Druid, priests would do is that they would light these bonfires for the community overall and each person in the community would take a torch or light from that a torch and then they would go to their homes and they would light up their fireplace because during the harvest their fireplaces would go out because they were working so hard and so that was kind of the tradition that started the idea of what we call today Halloween however in about the ninth century, Pope Boniface decided that the people of Ireland uh, should not be celebrating that particular ceremony, but he knew he couldn't stop them. So what he did is he brought it into part of the Catholic Church. He called it All Saints Day, but he moved the date to May the 13th. So the people of Ireland and England and Northern England, Scotland didn't make any difference. They continue to celebrate, even though Pope tried to bring it in under the banner of Christianity. It eventually became All Saints Day, and then All Hallowed Day uh, was also a name which followed All Saints Day, 31st, the 1st and the 2nd of every November. And the church still celebrates that today. Then when Protestants came into being, came into uh, began to appear and break off from the Catholic Church, they wanted nothing to do with that particular holiday. They really saw it as a pagan holiday. And when they came to America, what they did was they declared that it was not an appropriate holiday. So Americans didn't really celebrate what eventually became Halloween until around the 16th, 17th century. 1600s, 1700s, when Scott Irish folks were coming into the United States as immigrants. And as they settled, they brought with them this Halloween idea. And so eventually the United States decided that Halloween would happen every October the 31st, and we would celebrate it by trick or treating. Now, eventually we got to treat or trump. And treat or trunk is really a place where you go to uh, do the treat, treat or trick, trick or treating without any tricks, right? And so that celebration caught on. And eventually, again, it is now it came to the United States no longer as a pagan and or a Christian holiday, but instead of a holiday. Uh, that was very much commercialized and it became popular because when it came to America, they changed it somewhat and then trick or treating or Halloween moved back across the Atlantic. And now today, just about the whole world will, will celebrate a trick or treat Halloween. So that's a little bit about Halloween. You know, during that time, there is still the belief that spirits come out, ghosts come out. Some people don't believe in ghosts. Others do. I'll bet you if you see one, you would probably believe in it. And a very famous man named Winston Churchill spent an evening at the White House in Washington, D.C. And many have reported the ghost of Molly, that Mad Dolly Madison there. And Dolly was the president, uh, wife, uh, of James Madison. So Dolly Madison 
appears in the Rose Garden and appears in the Rose Room from time to time. Winston Churchill had that experience and said, I now believe in ghosts. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, I tend to believe that certainly unity would teach that there is something that goes on after we lose our bodies, that there is an adventure that continues, that we have the opportunity to continue as spirit. And whether or not there is reincarnation, whether or not uh, there's a place called heaven, um, what is really important, I think, is that the consciousness that you are, the consciousness that I am, continues on into the future, continues on as a way in which we experience life in so many different ways. When we experience death here, it does not mean everything's over. I happen to think it means everything is just beginning, that there's more. And it's a, an adventure that will be wonderful and that we can experience and understand that we are spirit itself. So thank you for this time to talk about the history of Halloween. And thank you, Jessica, for the work that you're doing in working with our children to bring in these special services. May God bless each and every one of you. And I look forward to seeing you in December. God bless. Now it's time for when we collect our offerings. Please take your tithes and offering in your hand or place them over your heart as we say together our offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Could the ushers please come forward? And now our offertory song, again, the ancestors chant. and offerings. We bless them and send them forth to do their mighty and mighty works. Thank you. And now please join me in our youth ed blessing. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ you are. And now please join me in our peace song.
please join us in the prayer for protection. The light. 